raster data on an interactive map. So let's close all of our population data, clear the console, and close this section. We've created a new section for raster data. And if you're jumping into this section after a break, that's totally fine, but make sure that you have all of the libraries that we need so that the code works. Okay, so we want to plot raster data, and for that we need the raster library. Let's run that. The next thing we want to do is import some raster data to work with. I'm going to use the land surface temperature raster for Washington. This is the one that we were working with in the raster module. So let's create a variable first. I'm, go I'm going to call mine LST for land surface temperature. And let's import the TIFF file. So you can use whichever TIFF file you want. I am choosing one that we are all we are already familiar with, but replace whichever uh, TIFF file you want and just make sure you keep note of the variable name because we are going to be referencing it in our leaflet function. So we have our raster. Now let's create a leaflet function. What we did for the past two sections is reference the data set right directly in the, fun in the function here, but I'm going to do something a little bit different this time, but first let's add some tiles. So here is our leaflet tile. And instead of using add polygons or add markers, we're going to use add raster image. So this is the go-to function if you're trying to work with raster data. So as I mentioned, I, we typically take the name of the variable and, and plunk it into here. But instead of doing that, I want, to sh I want to show you another way of doing this. So instead of putting it between the brackets for the leaflet function, I'm going to put it between the brackets for the add raster image function. And let's run that. Okay, so here is our land surface temperature data set. It actually looks quite good as it is. I think it would be interesting to make it slightly less opaque so that we can compare the temperature in the raster to different to the area underneath. So let's use the opacity argument. And I'm going to set mine to 0 0.5. So it'll be 50% transparent. So there it is. And you can see the lower temperatures are very closely aligned with this water body. If you're, if you're from Washington, you'll know what it is, but I don't know the name. I think we can zoom in here. So the Potomac River, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm actually happy with the colors as they are. I think they're representative of uh, what, what color palette you would choose for a land surface temperature. Let's change this to 0.8 run it again. I think the colors are interesting and I think they make a lot of sense for a temperature data set. You have warmer colors and cooler colors. However, I think that we want to use a different direction of colors because you we, we have a dark orange color for the cooler temperatures and then we have a light yellow to bluish green for the higher temperatures. So we want to flip the colors around. Let's create a color palette. I'm going to call it pal.lst. We're going to use the same color numeric function. And inside there, we want to assign a palette, a domain, and values. Let's pull up our color brewer again. So I think the yellow, orange, and red, which is this top row here, 
makes a lot of sense for our land surface temperature data. So let's assign that here. And then for our values, we just use the name of our raster. So for us, it's LST. And we actually don't need the domain argument here. So let's get rid of that. Let's assign this color palette to our leaflet function. I'm going to create another copy so that you can compare them after. So we just use the colors argument in our function. Let's run that. Ooh, LST. Okay, so I think this looks really good and the colors make more sense now. We have a lighter LST for the river areas where you would expect a cooler land surface temperature. And then you can see the hot spots in the cities where the surface temperature is quite high. So it's really interesting. Now we can go ahead and add a legend. We're going to do the same thing that we did last time. We need to reference our color palette. We need to reference values. And we need to give it a title. Let's run that. Oh, not R. It should be LST. And there it is. We have our roster, we have our legend, and we have a range of values. So that's that. We are going to move on into a different type of mapping.